All right, hey guys, so Brian here. Just uh, wanted to do a real quick update. You know, I wasn't really planning on, um, you know, buying any more silver and gold or anything today, uh, but, you know, with all the, the prices being so low, I just, I, I really couldn't resist. I was like, man, I, I was looking at it. Uh, I've seen some posts about, you know, uh, about the, you know, the spot prices kind of crashing. And, and so sure enough, I pull it up. And I was like, wow. I was like, I, you know, so I, I really went, you know, kind of focused more on silver. It was kind of initially uh, what I was thinking um, since it was down to like 22, 22, 40, something, nine or something like that, uh, an ounce on a spot price. And so I went there going for that. Well, uh, in my, one of my previous videos, I just recently mentioned that I would, uh, you know, on my list would be to, to you know, get into the uh, the half gold sovereigns, which I hadn't seen. I hadn't even seen those locally. And sure enough, <laughs> they had they had a half sovereign over there today, which I was like, I was really shocked to even see it. So, but it's a 1899 half sovereign. I said, I'm just a really big fan of these uh, sovereign coins. So my first one, that's a half sovereign, though. Uh, all, all the other ones I've got are the uh, full sovereigns. And so I went ahead and got a, a airtight case. They have them over there for, you know, two bucks or whatever. So um, and that was kind of the, yeah, you know, mintage and, the, and all the information on it. But um, it was came in that, and I just bought the, I put it that in, uh, in the airtight as soon as I got it uh, today. And then I went ahead and grabbed, I was, you know, the uh, looking at their silver and all that. And they didn't even have any generics out there. So he was acting like they were out. And on my opinion, some of these shops, I think when they're not making enough money on them, I think they just, I'm assuming they just probably hoard them out back, by my opinion, but whatever. Uh, so, you know, I did get something. Now, these are just cool uh, Morgans, so uh, nothing special. You know, that was a little bit cleaner, but but it is kind of scratched up. But this was these are just in the cool bins. Um, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of these, um, so they were, um, well, they twenty nine ten a piece on that, so under thirty bucks a piece uh, for for some Morgans. So I got three more to kind of add to add to what I just got recently on those, since I just got into the Morgans and the Peace Dollar stuff, uh, and, and they didn't have any cool uh, Peace Dollars, so um, so I went ahead and just went with three of those, and then I did get some um, some more junk silver, um, the uh, you know, so I got like basically two and a quarter to two twenty-five, uh, and I really like the these Walking Liberties. That's one of my favorites. This and the Mercury Dimes are my favorite on the junk silver, uh, but since I had twenty-five cents extra, I went ahead and grabbed a grabbed a quarter or two, so and stuff. So uh, just some stuff I had to you know. So all together, it was a little under. So this was this uh, half sour ones. I got that for two fifty-five, uh, and then the uh, all together it was a little under is like five bucks under four hundred dollars total for everything. So. You know, I felt like it was, um, you know, pretty good and pretty good deal all in all uh, and stuff. But let me know in your comments what you think about it and just something I'm going to, uh, you know, sack when I can. Like I said, I wasn't planning on, on spending the money, but when you see the prices dip like that, you know, like they say about the you know, dollar cost averaging is really important uh, if you're going to be able to keep growing your stack. And um, at the same time, you're, you know, buy, you buy at the, you know, lowest prices, uh, unlike a lot of people end up, you know, rather than selling when it's low and then buying when it's high. Um, so that's a mistake people, a lot of average people make just in general, not just in silver and gold, but stock markets and everything else and stuff. So, oh, and an update on my IRA. So I've already got all that concluded uh, on the gold, silver IRA. I ended up uh, going with, uh, they had some different uh, Nugina coins that were gold and uh, silver options uh, that were more, um, you know, more I consider more collector stuff. And, uh, so I went, I kind of went that route on, on it, but I got like 80% gold, 20% silver, uh, pretty much is kind of the whole stash. I'm just now, I need to check the website. I looked at it the other day and they had, they had, a, uh, although everything's locked in, like the price is locked in on what I bought. So I've already been, already, you know, uh, been, all that's been sealed, but I'm just waiting on the uh, metals to actually arrive into my account and the end of the, uh, uh, Delaware uh, uh, vault uh, and stuff. So, you know, so once that's done, then I will uh, middle update on my IRA website. I'll be able to log in. And I, even now I log in, I see my money there, the dollar amount of my retirement, but uh, I don't see the metals just yet. So uh, hopefully that'll be in there uh, by next week. He said it'd be up to, up to two weeks uh, for that. And it was like 19 gold coins and then uh, 80 uh, silver coins, which 
those Guinea, Guinea, I, I hate pronounce that, New Guinea or something like that, but those coins are, are 1.25 ounces of silver, each one of those, and it was like 80 coins on that, so I felt pretty good all in all um, and stuff, and so and it was also those collector, more of the collector type of coins are, uh, you know, they're, they're you know, not supposed to be confiscatable, uh, when I, you know, when I hear stuff like that, I, you know, that's my ears perk up because that's a big reason why I, uh, I prefer, I've, I've shifted over, you know, all to, you know, the, more of the pre 33 or foreign gold, stuff like that, which really, I don't, I only have like, I think I only have two U S gold coins. Now that I think about it, I've got two uh, Liberty heads and I think that's it on the American gold. The other stuff is uh, Mexican gold. Uh, and uh, Great Britain on these sovereigns. That's pretty much all I've got and stuff. So uh, more collectible, collectible style you know, and foreign coins, things like that, that, you know, just makes it makes it harder. And I know people kind of uh, bulk at the idea of confiscation as if it's, you know, not a reality, uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, his, if, if history is not reality, then I don't know what is. I mean, we've seen it. It's you know actually happened here in the United States. And people think that, you know, it'll never happen again or whatever, you know, okay, that's, that's your, your take. But the problem is, is that, you know, I agree, it probably won't happen. It won't happen probably suddenly or immediately. But the question becomes, I mean, do you want to be forced to go out and sell? So if we get, let's say, you know, once, you know, once the dollars collapse, you know, it's, you know, and, and again, desperate governments do desperate things. And so, you know, uh, the problem is, is that are you going to want to have to be forced to go cash in your American Eagles, your gold uh, buffaloes, and all that kind of stuff, all all that all that gold bullion, do you want to be forced to go cash it in to a, you know, a horrible, possibly a horrible fiat, a digital dollar or something like that? Uh, do you want to be forced to do that because you, you made you didn't make any decisions early on in your stack? You didn't have at least some options. Uh, that were uh, outside of confiscation stuff. So I mean, could you, what what I assume what's going to happen is if 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 and when there is a confiscation, I assume what will happen is the uh, you know people obviously in our community are going to talk, uh, assuming there's internet and all that. But uh, but they're going to people are going to talk once they get wind of it of the conf confiscation coming. People well of course people are going to hide their gold. I mean of course there's going to be a lot of that going on. Uh, so you can try to hide it, um, but again. That's one less, you know, um, it's going to be one less issue, in my opinion, where, I mean, obviously you're still hiding it from looters and stuff like that, but in terms of, you know, the government, you know, actual military coming to your door and trying to steal your, steal your crap, um, you know, that's, you know, that's another thing. Uh, and so, so it, you know, to me, it could just be one less concern, you know, and stuff. So it doesn't mean it can't happen, um, but, you know, to me, it's like, hey, if I can, um, you know, cause, and I, you know, so this is, you know, like I said, two, two fifty five for, you know, a half sovereign, um, you know, sure you might get, you might get, I mean, this is like 0. 0.11, what was it? Point, um, yeah, uh, uh yeah, gold point one one seven seven. um, you know, gold. So you're talking, you know, so, uh, over a little over a 10th of an ounce. And so you're, and you're going to pay about that for American gold Eagle. Uh, you know, probably probably more is depending on the right now the price is down. So, uh, but you're probably going to pay around that 250 to you know uh, you know 280, 290, something like that maybe depending on the price, the spot price is. But you know so, but again I I do like I like the idea of having that you know kind of that it's not only is the gold to hedge it against inflation in general, um, but having more of the collector currency, the collectible coins, it makes it harder where the governments can't. Just come in and say, well, we're going to pay you X amount for, you know, uh, per ounce of gold. We're going to pay you, just like they did, you know, many years ago, where they'd come in and and uh, they they would so they'd pay you so much an ounce. I don't remember how much they ended up paying back then, but it was like twenty five dollars something like that. And then they turn around once they have the gold or majority of it. What do they do? They raise the price of the spot price to thirty five dollars or whatever. So, um, you know, that that scams happened before. So it's like. I mean, people that bulk at the idea of confiscation not happening, that's fine. Uh, but again, if history doesn't repeat itself, I don't know what does. So, um, so keep that in mind. Uh, so at, at least I would just advise having a variety of gold. I think that would be good. Uh, so if you're if you're set on the the you know keeping uh, gold, uh, you know the you know regular um, you know eagles and buffaloes things like that, I think it's good. 
Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily put a lot of money in a lot of premium products out there as far as bullion. Uh, I don't, you know, I've kind of, you know, been burned on that on the silver premium stuff that I've kind of phased out of and stuff. So I've been burned because you don't, a lot of times you don't get your money back when you go to sell it. And especially that's one of the problems I have too, is that, you know, if we're talking about in a prepping scenario and, and, and like, you know, that's really what, you know, it's a big part of what I'm preparing for is the collapse of the currency uh, in, 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 in economy probably with it. So, um, you know, I'm probably preparing more for that. And so for that reason, you know, the more you think about it, the premium silver, uh, and gold, um, you know, it, it, it's, you, you're probably not gonna get your money back, you know, and a lot of that stuff, you know, you can't necessarily say that collector's gold, you, you, you know, is more likely to get your money back, um, and stuff, not, not hundred percent either on that, but you're more likely to probably get it, um, especially if it's recognizable. I mean, it's, um, not a lot of fakes out there, that type of thing and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, I just think that is something like, but at least have a, I would say at least have a variety of stuff. So if something were to happen, then, you know, if you had to go rush and cash in your, your bullion, uh, because you got wind of a confiscation coming and you wanted to get rid of it real quick, or, or if you had to go cash it in and try to move it over real fast into, uh, you know, some pre-33 stuff or collector's coins or things like that, or other assets, Potentially land uh, be another thing. I mean, things like that. Uh, potential housing, those kind of things. Uh, then, you know, you, you can you can do that. But again, if you've got a variety of stuff, uh, then that, you know that that'd be that'd be the next best thing in my opinion to just have have a variety where uh, you could do you know if you had to go bury some or whatever to go hide it or <laughs> whatever you had to do, I guess uh, and stuff. So, but just some things to think about. And uh, like I said, just keep on stacking, guys, and uh, hang in there. Prepare for the be worst and the best. Okay. And, uh, and also stay in your Bibles. Uh, you know, if you're not in your Bible, get in your Bible. And it's like faith is going to be, you know, uh, I think really, really tested as we move forward in this economy is, uh, that's, that's a big aspect. It's going to be, they're going to be one's faith, uh, whether they can hang on or not. Uh, many, many probably will fall away, you know, from the faith, but also, um, malnutrition, things like that. So, all right, guys, talk to you later.